Healy Hodgkinson, just just back from university, I believe. Where where have you where have you started at this autumn? Um, I start, I just started at Leeds Beckett University. But I've only been there three weeks, and I'm back home. And you, but, uh, you look at you look a bit sweaty as well. You just done a session in the house on on the treadmill, I believe. I, I hear that you've you've uh, been in been in contact with with people that have maybe got the coronavirus. Yeah, um, got the news this morning, so I decided to stay at home. And um, luckily, I've got a treadmill that's going to keep me running for the next two weeks until I can get back into sessions. Oh, okay, and t- tell us a bit about uni. You've obviously just started there. What, what course are you doing there? I'm studying criminology with psychology. Um, I've only done two lectures so far, but it's all it's all a bit messy. I'm not going to lie; like, not no one really knows what they're doing. Everything's online, but hopefully, it becomes clearer in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got and el- my eldest daughter is at Bristol Uni. My youngest daughter is second year A-levels. Coincidentally, she's interested in, in doing a criminology degree. It really fascinates her. But for students, whether they're doing GCSEs, A-levels, university, it's, it's been a nightmare at the moment, isn't it? T- tell us a bit about the, the difficulties. How weird has it been starting at uni when you've, you've really got no lectures to go to yet? Yeah, it's just been, well, obviously you can't do the normal uni stuff, like you can't go out and meet new people because there's like six people max and now there's a 10pm curfew, so people just don't really see the point in going out anymore. Um, but it's been nice to get my, get to know my flatmates, but with the whole, there's a, currently, I think there's now four f- flats in my accommodation that are in quarantine. Um, so it's one by one, everyone's just getting coronavirus. And my sister, she's just been, she's in year 10 at school, she's just been sent home for two weeks because someone in her year it's got coronavirus, um, so it's a bit difficult, but we crack on anyway. Oh, no. Well, despite all these problems, you've had a, a tremendous year at, at 800 metres. But, but for, first of all, I'd like to kind of go back through your career right to the very beginning. And I, heard, I think I heard a story around about the time of the British champs that, that you went to the Commonwealth Games in Manchester as a baby yeah. back, exactly. in, back in 2002, which I shouldn't imagine you remember and no, I don't. Out, but how, how, how did that all happen? You, you, your parents must have had a, an interest in athletics to actually go, go down there and take you as a, as a very young child. Yeah, my mum and dad, are always, they're, they're like watching me now. They've always been interested in it, you know, over the years. More interested since I started running. My mum now runs and does sessions down at my club as well. Um, there's actually a picture of me and my mum at the track somewhere. She's holding me. I'm like six months old or something um, at the 2002 Commonwealth Games. And did you did you say Bolt one of them ones or did you not? Uh, two thousand two thousand and two. It's a little bit before. He, I mean, he ran he ran yeah. in, in Glasgow two thousand and fourteen. Uh, two thousand and two was more about Paula Radcliffe and, and mm. uh, Mark Lewis Francis's and it's that kind of generation. But it's I mean, you you were it's literally the year you were born, isn't it? Two thousand and two. Yeah. <laughs> Four or five months old, something like that. Did, did your parent? Did your parents have any athletics talents? Did, did they do it when they were when they were younger? Did they were they any good at good at running or athletics or sports of any kind? I think they like to think they were. I don't. <laughs> know. Um, my dad used to get, do athletics and rugby, and he did London Marathon back in nineteen ninety six, I think. Um, so he's always had a bit of into it. Mum's always been like an all round sporty, but never really like fully focused on athletics until uh, I came along. Oh, okay, and then then you obviously you started at a young age, but seem to start by doing all kinds of events to begin with. You seem like a typical young athlete who just jumped into into all kinds of things from cross country through to you know various track and field events. And I mean, looking through some of your past results as well, you you didn't you weren't winning English schools type competitions from from an early age. So I, I guess you mainly had those those early years it was probably all about fun and just not training too hard I'm guessing yeah um no I've never won in the schools which is quite sad actually um never won the now, no I've never won it um because I came third back in the juniors into I had a terrible race and then the year after I missed it because I was at the European Youth and I've just never done it since so fortunately oh. I haven't so but yeah back when I was younger um I actually had an ear operation back when I was 13 or 12 that put me out for about a year of running. Um, So that sent me back. But then, yeah, it was all about just having fun. And I'd be doing shot put one minute and doing doing a cross country a couple months later. So 
and then I kind of took it more serious. I think I won my first title when I was 15. It was the 2017 under 17 nationals. That was when I got my first title, and from then on, it's just been a climbing wall. You just got better and better. Now yeah. we um, we we heard on on Sunday a few days ago that that Elliot Kipchoge his problem in the marathon was he had something wrong with his ear. A lot, yeah. a lot of people were thinking, really, could that could that really disrupt you in the marathon and 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 slow you down and cause problems? But you you, you say there it kept you out for what the best part part of a year when you had an ear problem when you were what age age fourteen fifteen or so. I was like I think I was thirteen when I had done. Yeah, it was um. I had like a, it's called a mastoidectomy. So it was like a, like a tumor type growth that was like growing all the way back here and I had to be removed. But because it was so near to, um, I think it was, it was either so near to my brain or spinal nerves or something that um, I had to have a month off school and you just can't move in case it damages anything inside. Um, so then once you have that time off, it takes ages to come back and things like that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So once you got that out that out of the way and you started improving with your running, was was there a point where you kind of got serious and you, you realised yeah. that things, things were starting to, to happen for you a lot more? Yeah, it was probably when I got my first English schools medal. I think I was 14 and I got bronze at English schools. And then from that point, um, I realised obviously I wanted to take it more seriously. And even on the next year, I didn't have a great English schools. A couple of weeks later, I won the national title. And I remember winning the national title and um, crossing the line and, and I heard about there was a European youth the year after. And I was like, oh, I really want to go and try and get my first GB vest. So from that point, um, that really spurred me on. So European youth champs, they, they kind of changed the name somewhere along the line. It became the European Under-18 Championships yeah. at one stage. So you, you heard about this event and decided that you wanted to, to aim for it? Maybe to make the team originally, or or did you have your your eyes set on a medal? No, it was literally just trying to make the team <laughs> because I was just trying to make the team, and then it ended up going really well, um, more well than I expected. So yeah, I remember you won that race quite emphatically as well. It was it was uh, a superb race race for you. you, you were, you, were you running like a scared rabbit during the race, or or were you feeling in control? Um, I think I got fairly in control because I'd, I'd done my research on the athletes and tried to figure out what their strengths and weaknesses was. So I knew that my, my best bet was to kind of like just take the front and make it fast and just see you can keep up with it. Um, and it, it paid off in the end and managed to come away with the gold. Um, I think that was the race that like broke me through to the juniors, um, with mixing with like the under 20 that race because I remember racing in the under 20 champs that year and I won and I was only I think I was 16. Um, so that was probably my biggest breakthrough year so far, along with the past year, which has kind of got me up with the other older girls as well. Has it always been 800 metres for you? Because I know you've done lots of various events and when I mean, you've run pretty well in cross country as well. I think you've won an English schools medal in, in cross country. Has it, has it always been the 800 for you? Is it, and if so, is it because you enjoy it more or, or do you think it's because you're physically better suited for that that distance? Yeah. I think now I'm physically better suited for it. I think as I've grown up, my figures just developed probably more for 800. But I used to be more of a 1500. Now, when I was younger, it was like, you know, you could do 1200 before you moved up to the 15. That was my event, 1200 and cross country. I only really started doing 800 two, two, three years ago. And that's when I've stuck to it ever since. So. Okay. And then after the, after the European Youth Champs, you did the European Under 20 Champs. And then you've you've obviously gone up into the the senior. It seems to have happened so quickly for you. You've gone up into the the senior championships now at British level, and then won the won the British title this yeah. this year. Does it does it all seem a bit a bit weird and surreal, or are, are you taking it in your stride so far? Um, I'm in, I'm enjoying it. Um, I really enjoyed doing the British champs this year because even after all year, just not even knowing if there's going to be any races to be able to take the British title and match it with my indoor was really good as well um but yeah no I'm just enjoying it and uh, I really want to race some of the older girls though I really want to test myself against them I've not really had a chance to race many of them yet so hopefully I get to do that next season do you, do you have a role model out of any of any of these these other athletes are there any that you've particularly looked up to or, or maybe athletes from a few years ago who are retired now do you have do you have any who you particularly admire Probably one well, of my coaches, Jenny Meadows, because he, 
she's just done it all hasn't she like she's been there done it all and she's always got like if I'm in a scenario she's already done it and she's always giving advice on like how to get out of that what she did or what she would do if she could do it again um so she's always there to help she's probably my that sounds only. like a very diplomatic answer there <laughs> <laughs> but no, Jenny's great I mean Jenny's Jenny's been there done it got the t-shirt she's she's been a great 800 meter runner and and I'm, I've got no doubt you get great advice from from Jenny and, and also a husband Trevor coaches you as well doesn't he they they have uh, they both have a lot of a lot of input and t- tell me about your your coaching setup there have you have you always lived in the, in that area you're in the um is it uh, kind of near Wigan you you live yeah. or some, somewhere on the on the outskirts of Wigan yeah I'm on the on the outside of Wigan um I've always lived there I've, I've lived here since I was like two four um but I was originally at my I was I still run for Lee Harriers and I was coached by the Lee Harriers lot until about this time last year I decided to move um just make the switch and it's really paid off well luckily they're only 20 minutes from me it's worked out really well um so it's a great team set up at the moment okay how's the training been during this year I mean during the I mean, we had the lockdown period back in the the spring where lots of athletes were struggling to get onto tracks and and mm. uh, if they lived in cities, they were you know just literally struggling to go out for runs generally and and then Manchester generally's had a had a pretty tough time isn't it with with restrictions since is it has it been hard to train or or do you live do you live quite near lots of grassy areas and quiet roads and uh, uh, yeah you been got, we've got like a trail park just. I'm saying over there, you can't see it, but um, a trail park around there, which I've, I did a lot of my sessions on in lockdown. Um, I didn't enjoy lockdown personally because I like to be in a group training with people. I just really like thrive off it. Yeah. Um, so doing like three months without it, it was like, I was not happy with it, but um, managed to keep going somehow without getting injured, which would. Um, but yeah, it all paid off. I did find it sugar though, but every week instead of, we usually do a track on a Thursday. Instead, Trevor had us um, doing a Zoom call lactic session together, um, which was really nice. It really helped to almost train it with the guys again every week. Okay. I did an interview a few weeks ago now with Daniel Rowden, who obviously won the, the men's British 800 metre title when, when on the same weekend you were winning the women's. And he said he hated the lockdown period. He just lost all his motivation you know, the Olympics went, he, he just had no desire to train at all. His, his mileage just plummeted. He really struggled. So yeah. it sounds like you weren't quite as bad as that, but you didn't really, didn't really enjoy it. No, I wasn't as bad as that, but uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. There were times when instead of just getting up in the morning and getting it done like you normally would, I'd leave it till like seven o'clock at night. Just be like, oh, I can't bother, I can't bother. But I'd get it done eventually, but it was just, it was just a bit draining, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Were you, were you coming up to A-levels as well? Did you have A-level exams, I guess? Yes, um, but they got cancelled. So it, it got cancelled back in March. Then it was just a case of, I like to have a bit of a distraction apart from just training. So when it went from there was no college, there was no nothing, then my life just became training. I think that's what maybe drained me a little bit, not having that of a distraction. So it reminded me of what happened with the A-level students. It was just, just everybody was literally assessed were they so you just got given grades based on what the teachers yeah. thought you were capable of and based mm. on mocks and stuff yeah it didn't do very well. which, which must have been quite unsettling as well to go through that spring period not knowing if you were going to have exams or not for a while I know um a lot of teachers didn't think they would get cancelled they're like no no and then next minute we're in lockdown and they're cancelled and then no one really knew what was going to happen I know a lot of my friends who were supposed to get like A's got like ease um because the government had changed them so that but luckily i think they've changed them back so most people have managed to get into university but it's not ideal i think i'd rather have sat my exams and from an athletics point of view i, I think you were probably in pretty good shape back then as well because you were mm-hmm. you uh, you run really well indoors didn't you was it was it in vienna you had a, a brilliant run uh, broke the british british junior indoor record so that must have been frustrating coming into the spring and early summer period and not being able to race in it initially. Yeah, I know. We, we'd just gone back into a base period and I think the lockdown came a week before we were supposed to go on training camp in South Africa. And I've never been, so got that taken away. And then oh, no. until 
August, August, July. I think it was my first race end of July. Um, so it was a long four or five months, but it was worth it in the end. Yeah, and then you, you got racing in the end and you managed to get a few races under your belt in, in the end. Yes, I even managed to go abroad as well, which was quite exciting. And did you get much of an end of season break? Um, yeah, I got two weeks off. I started running last week, doing some jogs. I just did my first session back today. Um, so now it's just the build up into winter and hopefully no more disruptions. Yeah, yeah. Now, lot, lots of 800 meter runners seem to train in, in kind of two different ways. You either have your endurance runners that try and do a fair bit of mileage, you know, lots of sessions at kind of 1500 meter pace, they try and build that endurance, or you have the real speed merchants that seem to thrive off the speed they do lots of sprint work and they come at it from that angle and then I guess you have others who who do a bit of both what what's your what's the general philosophy in your with, with yourself and your coaching setup at the moment is it more speed based or more endurance based or a little little, little, little little bit of both I think it's a little bit of both um we dip into the 1500 type sessions but we also dip into the 400 sessions um but my, my coach always says I'm naturally quite strong, so my speed is my weakness. So that's what we try and work on more whilst I'm young and you can build your speed up now. Um, I'm quite, I'm a lot stronger, so I'm, I think naturally, I probably do all right at 1500. I don't want to run one, but I'll probably do <laughs> a decent one. Um, but yeah, at the minute, I'm probably trying to focus on more 48, just trying up my speed. Um, so, but I'd still say I'm a little bit, a little bit of both. 800 is obviously very painful, but 1500 is even more painful, isn't it? Just because it lasts longer. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done one in two years. I'm not sure. The last time you ran a 1500. Yeah, it was my opener of 2018, and I wasn't happy with it. And I've just not done one since. It's hard to fit them in, you know, when you've got to prepare for champs, and then once you've done champs, it's so like, oh, you just want to go on a break rather than do 1500s. But I'll squeeze one in at one point. Yeah. At some point. Can, can you see yourself, I mean, it's obviously a long way off now. I mean, you're running so well at 800, but can you see yourself eventually moving up to 1500 in a few years' time? Might, might it be an event for you in the end? Maybe. <laughs> you don't seem too keen. <laughs> at the minute, no, but we'll have to see how it goes, maybe. At the moment, you're just running really well at 800, so you may as well stick with that. Now, you, now you're, um, you're, your whole uh, kind of generation as well, in the 800 meters it's just super strong now yeah. on the girls side and the the boys side as well i think you're you're very similar age to max bergen aren't you another another northern northern runner yeah. who's, who's obviously a superb talent at 800 have you have you kind of enjoyed growing up with with uh teammates like this on british junior under 18 teams and, and yeah no oh, yeah it's been good i know max quite well um when well when I eventually get back to Leeds after quarantine and because uh, Max, Max doesn't live that far away from Leeds we're gonna tag in on gym together um oh. over in Leeds so that'll be nice but yeah growing up with him is nice because he went to the European Youth as well and we both won that year um so it's kind of just been stepping stones although he's got a few more world records than I do but <laughs> um no it has been nice it's always nice to watch as well like I remember watching the the European and 20 boys last year when we got first second and third and the whole GB team just went mental. I was yeah. so amazed to watch. Max wasn't even in that race. I know, yeah, Max wasn't even in that race and it still went mental. I remember but, speaking to the, the three lads. I did separate interviews with the three lads who came one, two, three when they got back home. And, and it was just amazing to think that they finished one, two, three and Max wasn't even in it. I know. I remember the, the national final that year, I think, was even bigger than the European final because everyone in the under 20 was like sub 150. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, and the the women's the women's eight hundred as well, super strong. Yeah. I yeah. Think, Go on. I think this year a natural target for you would have been the the world under twenty championships. Yeah. That's on next year now is that is that? Uh, yes, what? it's been re put on next year. Um, the European Juniors is also on next year, so it's going to be busy. There's European Juniors in July. And then the World Juniors are scheduled two weeks after the Olympics. Um, so we'll just try and get there and see what I can do. Obviously, the killer question is the Olympics next year. And for an athlete like yourself, I mean, what, what would the targets be for you next year? Or is it, is it just really hard to say at the moment? 
I think it would just be a case of there's no pressure on me because I'm I'm so junior. I'm only 19, so I'd go into the British champs even if I haven't. If I've had if I've run the time, great. If I've not, then I'll just see what I can do against all the girls. And if I make it, fabulous. If I don't, then it's not the end of the world. I've still got hopefully got another 10, 15 years to try and get to the Olympics. You seem like you're really enjoying your your running at the moment. Did did you do other sports when you were a teenager? I mean, like, I mean. G- girls seem to I don't think girls can avoid things like netball for instance it's very hard to av- avoid a sport like that when, if you're growing, growing up as a teenager did you do did you do sports like that or was it always running for you uh yeah I well I dipped in and out of that at school I always played for the netball team at school football team um but when I was younger I used to be a swimmer um so I was swimming stupid hours a week um because they always swim loads don't they uh, in the morning I was I think I was only about 11 doing morning sessions night sessions um, things like that but I decided it wasn't the sport for me and switched over to athletics because I'm better at it. Was that just because you were mainly better at, at running or or was it the mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I always think the swimming you've, you've got to have a certain mindset because just those endless laps up and down a pool with not much to look at other than the lines on the bottom of the pool it can be quite quite mentally hard I think. Yeah, I still swim now. It's still part of my training um, now. I swim on a Monday, an hour and a half at my uh, my club, Harbridge. I've been with them for over 10 years now. Um, but yeah, swimming is a very hard sport. And I did a, a cross-country race when I was, I think I was about year six, and I came second in it. And they were like, oh, good, I'm the athletics club. And then I did, and then I really, I enjoyed that more. So I just made the switch. Oh, okay. I'm probably probably going on to dangerous ground here, but... In Leeds, that's a real hotbed for triathletes, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You've, <laughs> I can't imagine they've ever tried to to headhunt you at all because if if they find out you've got a swimming background and that you can run a bit, they'll be they'll be after you. But uh, I shouldn't imagine that's one of your one of your aims to start doing triathlons. Mm, I've thought about it in the past, but um, they're just too long. Well, if you don't like 1500, then you definitely won't like a triathlon. I mean, even the sprint races in triathlon last about an hour or so. So it's a, it's a lot of a lot of pain. <laughs> I know. That's off the cards for the time being. I will not be a triathlete. 800 is more painful, but it's all over quicker. So it's a, it's a more intense pain. But it doesn't last as long. When she's at 800, it's basically finished. So it's okay. <laughs> okay. So, so you're... you're uh, you're at home at the moment on the treadmill for the for the next few days and then you'll be well and truly into your indoor training still with a bit of a question mark over the winter season we don't know if we're going to get indoor indoor races for example but I guess it's just a case of easing you easing your way back into the winter training yeah just easing my way back in hopefully as an indoor season um because there's the indoor champs well might happen might they back in in March I'll try my best to try and maybe make make one of them next year but Right now, we'll just look at getting into winter and just trying to enjoy that. Do you, do you have a main goal for next year? Like one that really, you know, gets you out of bed in the morning and jumping on that treadmill training? Is it is it the dream of making the British Olympic team? Is it winning winning a, a medal or a gold medal at European or or World Junior Championships? Is there is the one? Is it is it? Yeah. You know, Rushing through the two minute barrier for eight hundred. Is it? You know what what's the what's the main thing that really kind of motivates you? Yeah, I'd say probably wanting to push through the two-minute barrier. Um, that's always a big game for 800 athletes, yeah. for women. Um, so definitely that is a big motivator. I also want to win the European Juniors because I only got bronze last time. Um, so that is definitely a big game. But at the back of my head is always everyone wants to go to the Olympics. So if I'm in contention, it's definitely a huge aim for anyone to try and get there. Yeah, sounds like you've got a nice, nice group of goals there. The two-minute barrier for eight hundred, unfinished <laughs> business at yeah. European junior level, and if you were to make the Olympic team, then that would be magnificent as well. So that's a nice, nice little set of set of goals. Well, th- well, thanks very much, Keely. You've uh, you've been great there, and yeah. thanks very much for your for your time. Well, thank you very much for having me.